Hi, welcome to our week in um, our class. Now, the focus of the topic today is a loan amortization. So we've already talked about time value of money and calculating things like loan payments. But now what we want to do is look at how do you build a loan amortization schedule using Excel, time value of money applications, and some of the formulas that we've learned. So let's take a look at an example. All right, here I have a loan. And let me... Um, make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better possibly. All right, I've got a loan for $65,800 for a truck. It's a five-year term and it's 6.5% interest. What I wanna do is first calculate the monthly payment. So we'll use our F of X function here in Excel and we're talking about a payment option. And so I'm gonna need rate, which is going to be that number right there, but I'm going to take it and divide it by 12. And that way I can get um, that calculation. Uh, comma, next value is 5, but I'm going to multiply it times 12. And that will get me the number of periods. And then the next is going to be the value in this case. And remember, I'll put a negative in front of it because it is a discounting or a present value in this case. And then so once I hit enter, there is what my monthly payment would be to buy this truck. Now, of course, I'm probably going to also be asked by the loan folks to put some money down, and that payment is um, maybe a little bit too high. So let's look at if we put some down money into here. So I inserted myself a row. Um, if we put down money, let's just say they're going to require us to put probably, let's say, 10% down. So I'm going to take whatever my truck price is and maybe multiply it times 10%. So that means you put 65.80 down. So that means we're going to borrow a little bit less. So let's go back to uh, our value here. And so we are going to take the, um, the C2 value now and let's um, take that number and subtract it from it and now we're going to get only having to pay 11.58 every month because we're only borrowing the difference between those two so i've got all my stuff set here it looks like this would be the right set of numbers and so uh, we're going to continue on all right so time uh, when you build a loan amortization these are the variables of a loan the time how long you're going to pay for it the payment, the principal, and the interest, which they represent a payment. So when you make a loan payment, it's a combination of these two. And that's what we're focusing on is how to calculate that. Also, the balance. See how that works. All right, let's start off with time. Well, time always starts with today. That's zero. And then it's going to be the first payment all the way through. And in this case, we're going to go all the way through 60 payments. All right, so there's our loan set up. Um, the payments themselves, I just press the equals key and just calculate, move that number to be a copy there. I can now press equals and choose the number above it, and then that will be the same all the way down because we're going to make 60 of those payments. So we're not making any payment today. We're making our payments at the end of the first period or month in this case. All right, principal and interest are the two that we want to calculate, but before we do that, we need to talk about what is the balance today. Well, the balance today, no payment, no principal, no interest, but actually we are borrowing, and in this case, it is that price of that truck minus what we said we could pay down, and so that gives us 59220 that we are borrowing. So, if you borrow that amount of money, then what is the interest and what is the principal? That's the question. Well, principal is just the result of your loan payment and the interest portion. We can calculate the interest. In fact, in time period one uh, equals a formula, we are paying, let's put some brackets here, we are paying that percent of interest divided by 12. We are paying that much interest times the loan balance, whatever we have borrowed. So that's $320. So that's what we're paying in interest. And so therefore principal must be that payment minus the interest portion. All right, now what about the balance? Well, the balance is gonna be whatever it was before subtracted from 
whatever you paid in principal in the first payment. So that means now it's coming down. It was 59,220, now it's 58. So now we've got three formulas written to do this in the first period. Let's review them. All right, first one was interest. That's gonna be our loan balance times this rate adjusted by the months. Well, this, this balance needs to change as we go down the page. That does not, so we need to put a dollar sign right in front of that five to keep it from changing to row six, seven, eight, all that way, all right? Let's see, principal is what's left over. Those two cells need to change as we go down the page. And then the new balance also needs to change down the page because that's how that would work. So it looks like we got these set. I can just copy all three, run them to the bottom, and then this checks out because at the very end, we should have zero dollars borrowed because we made our last payment. So you can see something about how loan amortization works. You start off by paying a higher interest and as you move over time, your interest value drops because your loan balance drops. You're still making the same loan payment. So every month you pay, at first you pay principal in an amount, whatever it calculates to be, but every time you make payments, you start paying it off faster and faster and faster. And you can see the balance gets down here. If somewhere you got into week 50 and you managed to have an extra $11,000 laying around, you made some money on something, um, then you could pay this whole thing off. Or you also have to think about, well, I could take that money and make money. So I'm paying 6.5% interest. I wonder, I probably could take uh, my money, hopefully, and make more than that. So maybe you keep the loan up. Um, but anyway, this creates what we call a loan amortization. Now, as I negotiate, I could um, try to figure out some things that might work here. For example, let's say I don't pay anything down. Instead of 1158, now you have a loan payment of 12 that we talked about before. What if you could just pay a straight, like just say, you know, look, I got 7,500 down. I want to just pay that. So we would see that that will drop our payment to 1140 and we still are paying off our loan at the right amount of time. You could go in here and try to say, well, you know what, what would happen if I try to push this to a four-year note? I'd like that better, get it paid off faster. If you click the four there, it's gonna adjust. It's only paying 1,300, and you're paying the truck off right there at the 48-month mark. The rest of this would become irrelevant. So can you handle a little bit more than the 1,200 uh, with the money down? Let's see, if, back to five. That's 1140. If you go to four, then that's 1382. So just a couple of hundred dollars a month would get it paid off two or a year fully uh, before that. And so you can kind of play with this. And that's the purpose of a loan amortization for you to lay it all out and actually um, be able to calculate these values. Again, time is a function payment, principal, interest, and balance. And those are the four factors of a time value of money. If you do the loan right at whatever year you're supposed to pay it off, that time mark will be equal to zero, which kind of lets you check your work. All right, thanks.